Uh, I apostle, good afternoon. Hey, guy. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I just did a yoga and I'm pretty relaxed. <laughs> nice, good timing. Yeah, yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Let's see if any people will show up. Some people show up already, which is great. <laughs> hey, hi everyone. Hi, hey, Irina. Hi, Irina. Hi, guy. George. Um, I'm not sure. Should I call you Ash or should I call you George? Ash, Ash, oh, George. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Um, Ash is good, but I think Ash. a lot of people like George. Um, it's it's a first name in a lot of English countries. Yeah. So yeah, it doesn't matter. Ash is good too. Uh, is your name Ash or is it the nickname? It's actually Ashish. It's just a short form for Ashish, like the drug Ashish. Ah, okay, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but and is that a nickname? Also, but but it, it, no, that's my real name. Oh, really? The, the drug is <laughs> awesome. The other problem that I have is I'll be a little quiet because it's about two o'clock here in Australia. Um, oh, okay. So um i'm i prefer typing in and chatting in because i don't want to disturb neighbors i stay in a unit so um we have neighbors close um it's pretty close so um so i i can't really um you know contribute in terms of vocals but i'll, I'll chat and I'll, I'll type in messages if that is okay with everybody yeah thank you it is <laughs> and thank you for being here <laughs> oh good pleasure I guess we can wait another two or three minutes for people to arrive, maybe, and then we'll start. Yeah. Hey, Justin. Welcome. Thanks, Basil. All right, I think everybody who wanted to join us, joined us. <laughs> so uh, we are a tight little group today. I like that. Uh, we can have more space for people to um, share what they have. Um, because we're such a small group, we can also do a round of check-in. So yeah, my check-in will be, <clears throat> I kind of got inspired to do a bunch of referendums for this cycle, which I think are connected with um, improving the process of how um, referendums and other decisions are made. Uh, and I don't have an exploration group. I don't plan to do long texts I just want to have a very focused uh, small, want to put up very focused small changes. And I'm also arriving pretty relaxed. Uh, I, I did some yoga before the session and I feel very well and happy to be here. Um, I'll pass it on to Irina. Thank you, Apostle. Hey, hi, everyone. 
Uh, yeah, I'm arriving pretty relaxed. It's like the first call for today and it's already evening. So <laughs> it was a pretty good relaxed day we had. Uh, I don't know how many of you here know Kobe. He was in the first cohort of ambassadors. He's ambassador with me and he is no longer active in seeds now but he come he came and visited me and Sorin in our in our home for the last two weeks so that was quite of a delight it was I think like the third person from seeds that I'm meeting physically in person and it was very very beautiful and he came with a camper from Netherlands and now He's going to Portugal on the way. So we had a pretty nice time together. A lot of chatting on sustainability, a lot of music, uh, documentaries, and <laughs> really high quality time together. So yeah, this is how I'm arriving, super excited and actually feeling very grateful for this community and what brought into my life. And I'm passing to Justin. How are you, Justin? I'm uh, I'm pretty good this morning. It's been like a last like maybe 24, 36 hours. I've been, it's been hard to anchor into what, I don't know, it's been hard to anchor into, into the like really fast movement or motions or something like that. Like, uh, like uh, I was watching people trying to schedule things and, and then trying to find out my own relationship to them. And it's it just, it's really kind of, it's, it's like I had to just take a deep breath and go really, really slow. And uh, so I'll do that real quick too right now, you know, just taking that deep breath and, and being okay with going slow. Um, yeah, um, I think my intention for this call today, just to name that is, is um, I think that I personally, I often um, use words that are, uh, they take a really, uh, an, a, a, an anti-posture on things, even though I think there's a big part of me that's very optimistic and sees a, a like a, a united future for this work and also believes that it can, <clears throat> that it is like having an impact and that I will continue to do that in positive ways. And so I think my, my intention for this call is to go slow and, and just try to speak clearly and, uh, and, and build upon and build with in ways that maybe um, haven't been so accessible in the past. Um, Mm -hmm. That feels true. And uh, maybe I'll pass it on to Thelma. Uh, uh, I'm trying to transition from my computer to the phone, uh, but not. Sorry, Thelma, I muted you. <laughs> I barely managed to claim host and mute <laughs> in time, sorry. Um. Yeah, I was trying to connect on the phone and to transition from computer yeah. to phone. Um, so sorry for that. Um, I'm arriving happy, excited, and really appreciative uh, of what Irina shared. Uh, I'm also very appreciative of the people that I met and see its ecosystem. Um, very happy. Now uh, feeling connected. Um, still trying to find my place inside its ecosystem, um, but feeling grounded here in this circle. So here is my entry point. So here is where I really feel connected to seeds and trying to, um, so being part now developing the do tell, but it's, it's still like in this transition moment, uh, but feeling with my feet on the seeds ground here. I'm happy to be here with you guys. And I pass it on to Ash. If he already checked in to do the, the, uh, Ash said that he won't be very vo vo voiceative because it's uh, middle of the night. 
where he is. So you pass it on to Julio, for example. Yes. Hi there. Um, yeah, I'm arriving kind of trying to get my ground. Um, many things going on. So yeah, feeling a bit disconnected from, from what's going on and especially the latest changes in referendums and people, you know, so yeah, that's me. I'm trying to get my bearings, get connection. That's me. Anyone left? I think ah, guys, guys. Bigor, uh, go ahead, Guy. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, where I'm coming from, well, from a week with a lot of uh, reading, writing, trying to figure out the referendums, like most of us, I suppose. Um, then today, Tuesday is a day, is one of the only days I have my son in an activity for six straight hours, which is a great day to catch up on things and, and have time for myself and really do stuff and be able to think straight. And which is great. Now it's mid afternoon and I'm also pretty relaxed and pretty, I feel like I've been very productive and yeah, just nice to be here again. Thank you. Thanks everyone for being here. So um, I guess I'll do uh, sharing of the, um, my ideas and then we can go on a round of questions and sense making reactions and i just want to like put it out for the collective to uh, just gather what the collective may feel about these topics that i want to propose as a referendum i share i'll share my screen now so this is the first point I have a couple of points. We'll see how uh, much we were able to go for this meeting. This is the first one, which is about um, speeding up voting, the voting process. Uh, I had like epiphany uh, last Friday when Irina said that she and Anna were thinking about creating uh, some changes in seats and they set out to do that but that was two months ago and they barely forgot what what it was about until it's ready to be voted in so i think uh this is like a common uh issue around in the ecosystem that we're usually waiting for something which is waiting for the voting cycle to end in order to uh, continue with, uh, like right now, there are two referendums and we're kind of like wait, long time waiting. On the positive side of that is that we have, um, we have a lot of time to do maybe sense making and maybe some due diligence uh, or something like that. But at the same time, there are so many things that are inside the referendums that you can actually, you can't really do a deep sense making <laughs> in due diligence. You can do somewhat, but not very far. So I don't know if that um, is a positive or a negative, but uh, we can get into this details later my proposal is basically about um instead of having one voting cycle per whole new moon cycle which is uh, like now we have new moon to new moon this is our voting cycle we would have two voting cycles new moon to full moon and then in the full moon we would have another voting cycle which would be full moon to new moon 
and so we will uh, increase the the speed or the the increase the speed of um, um, changes that are proposed and accepted or um, not. Um, we would probably double that speed, um, and this could be done um, just for referendums, and this can be done also for uh, co-proposals and milestones. So the whole cycle is uh, two weeks instead of. Um, Four. And there are um, benefits and downsides to both approaches. Um, so we can get into each one of them, but right now I would like to have a round of reactions and questions about the general idea of speeding up uh, the whole governance process. Um, have you guys ever thought about it? Do you feel it's a good idea? Um, what comes alive in you when you hear that proposal? Ash, please. Should I, um, should I read your comments? <laughs> Okay, my worry is a lot of campaign promoters, especially new promoters like Gale, this cycle need time to learn the process. The full cycle helps them learn the process. Even if voting duration is reduced, they'll need time to learn or seek feedback before the voting. Um, yeah, that's basically, it's good to, to have that feedback, uh, this learning session. Uh, this is what um, movement building was doing with the proposals with purpose uh, space. I'm not sure if that is alive still, but there was a space where people who wanted to create a cool proposal would go there and they would present before putting up the proposal. And there would be at least one or maybe a couple of people that would give them feedback that have experience with putting up co proposals and going going through the process. So um, I don't think that is entirely relevant to this um, um, this topic. I'm not sure if that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, Guy? Yeah, I just wanted to add that uh, it sounds like a good idea to me. It's, uh, I think it will speed up the decision making, but we have to remember that every decision making is followed by implementation and the implementation has its, uh, the time that it takes. I mean, especially if it has uh, um, technological aspects and stuff like this. So I, I personally, I think it's a good idea to, to start with. But yeah, we have to take into consideration the other part, the other after the 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 votes are done. Yes, yes, thank you. That's the good point, and <clears throat> uh, especially if we if this uh, referendum possible referendum got approved, there would need there would uh, need to be a technical time to actually change the. Um, um, smart contracts that are uh, managing the governance process. So uh, I imagine it would take maybe one or two months in order to change the the governance uh, contracts in order to this for this change to be implemented. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there there is there is that. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, if some uh, change is uh, this. Um, this proof, how do I say, unapproved, if if it's downvoted, disapproved, right? disapproved. It's a very 
uh, it's much fast, uh, faster um, um, feedback cycle. So people who put up a referendum and it gets disapproved, they can much faster, uh, they'll be able to um, make the new um, improved proposal much faster and reduce the time to actually iterate uh, on the negative uh, feedback loop, basically. So uh, yeah, that's, that's a great uh, point. Um, Irina, uh, first, Guy, is your question? Uh, uh, okay, it's answered. Irina, please. Uh, yeah, thanks, Apostol, for bringing this proposal. Actually, it has been also <laughs> one of my proposal when we designed the referendum, but people didn't like it. <laughs> so we decided to keep it out. And um, um, okay, my reflection on that is that seeds work like that for a while. So at the beginning, they were like half lunar cycle cycles and uh, it worked pretty well. I felt the rhythm was <laughs> different and it was more like activity and people were putting a bunch of proposal only campaigns and alliances because there were no referendums. And the change from half lunar cycle to one lunar cycle voting happened because of Reiki and some other people proposed to do so in order to have more people participating in the voting. So the reason behind was that people do not have enough time to participate in the voting. And so it got implemented. Uh, now, if you ask me if there are more people now participating in the voting than there were before, I don't know, I haven't looked at that, but my overall sense will be that no. However, the number of citizens increased, so overall I think we are kind of there. And uh, my suggestion or my uh, something that I would like to see happening <laughs> or, or still to experience and to explore is to, to have maybe the lunar cycle split in two, where maybe the first part will be like a building the proposal stage so that everyone knows that is the time when proposals are being created and you have the opportunity to provide feedback, you have the opportunity to contribute, and we may find ways in which these are transparent, shared with the community. So maybe we create an e-town hall or something and everyone knows that proposals are being created, these are proposals that are being worked on and you can provide feedback in time so that you, you have the opportunity to express your voice before the proposal is put up for voting when it may be too late. And this could be like half lunar cycle and then the other half lunar cycle it's the voting process, like it's happening now. So it could be like, in, it was beautiful the way Movement Building had the nursery uh, for proposals and then the proposal with purpose. So this kind of two stage. And it can be like half lunar cycle, half lunar cycle, or it can be like, it can go even like, um, uh, how to say, like both in the same time. I mean, it can work with a complete lunar cycle or it can go with halves if we put like proposal on voting in the same time with other proposals being developed. Uh, this needs to be considered. Well, another aspect that I would like to bring is that if, for example, referendums are half lunar cycle voting and then campaigns or alliances are one lunar cycle voting, then that will create a lot of confusion. So I think we'll need to go like full in either that way or this way. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be like, okay, people, I don't know what I'm voting when I'm voting on. Uh, yeah, that would be my, uh, my reflection at this stage. Yeah, and yeah. I will be happy to experience. Yeah, uh, thank you for that. It's interesting that it worked that way in the beginning. I didn't know that. That's like seed history. And it's also interesting that you had the same idea. Uh, seems that the idea is hovering uh, in the space. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, I I was thinking of putting actually a different referendums for making this change for referendums for core proposals and milestones and alliances. Uh, but then if we go into that direction, you're very right that people will not know. People right now barely know how much tokens they have in the different categories <laughs> and like how to use them. And if we have different uh, like cycles as well, it would be even like worse to um, uh, even more confusing, maybe not worse, but even more confusing for that. And yeah. Um, I I didn't hear any question. I just felt the sharing. Okay. So are you complete with that? Thank you. Justin? Yeah, um I I, I had a I had a similar hit to to Arena when I when you first presented it, which is something around the you know, really kind of if we're gonna use the lunar cycles. There's another uh, almost level of lunar that you can get into, which is that the new moon is a time for intention setting and, and moving toward, whereas like uh, the, the full moon is a time of, of letting go or or almost choosing and deciding. So there's like a the, what the, the rhythm that she was naming is actually even more deeply aligned to how people um, understand the cycles of the moon to actually operate. And so I thought that was really um, a good level of, of kind of using the mechanism deeper. And um, what, what I wanted to maybe bring was that when you first presented the the proposal, Apostle, I wondered, is this like a? I wanted to understand the, the kind of the first principle, thinking that you were working with, in the sense of like, what is the uh, so if we change the rhythm or the timing, does that solve the the problem that really is underlying what your what the proposal is meant to do? And if, and if not, I wondered how we could get there, so we could really make sure that if we change the timing, people that 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 is the. That is that that mechanism is actually supporting what I think you're what you're sensing into and it maybe that but I, I don't know partially because we don't know the comprehensive nature of what all the proposals you have for, going for but also because of the the um um what I noticed was that the, the orientation toward what are we trying to to mm, not knowing what, what what you want to do here with the set of proposals in some way and so um it's not like meant to like so maybe off the question or off the subject matter but what I noticed was that not knowing the the suite of proposals that you had, it made it hard to know if this was um, if this solution would cause um, kind of more challenge because it's just moving faster, or if it would really get at the heart of whatever it is that you kind of sense or see as a as as like a problem space to to that this is a, a solution within. Is that making sense? What I'm saying? Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, I feel the main problem um you're mentioning like what what what's my first first principle of thinking here i think it's around um being able to m move fast specifically in the part of the referendums and updates on how uh how the system works or might work uh right now we had from um from september till december we have two cycle two voting cycles basically which are not complete even uh because uh and because it's that announcement was made on the 22nd of september then we have new cycle beginning of october then new cycle beginning of november and then uh, until the next round table in the middle of december you have basically two voting cycles and i don't feel we have made a lot of progress into where the system, um, the seeds ecosystem wants to um, go. And that is largely because we're waiting 
to see if the proposals are going to pass or not the citizens are uh, going to uh, approve of this or not uh, but there are a lot of people voting on the last days so kind of like all the, and there are a lot of people who are voting because other people reminded them to vote <laughs> So uh, it's kind of like there is this meaningless loss of time that I'm feeling that specifically for referendums, I think might be super um, useful. And I'm also seeing how even in core proposals, uh, people usually uh, get into making the proposal uh, five days before the new cycle. I've seen how that works a number of times because they decide that there is no time and they have to catch the new cycle or they have, or otherwise they have to wait for, you know, um, another month and a half <laughs> or more. <laughs> if, uh, yeah, if they want to, um, go through the process um, and it kind of feels more natural to have that option to uh, put up what you want to um, put up for voting your desire changed and not be anxious that it would take like three months to two or three months to actually pass. Uh, but it would take like, put it up this cycle and it goes and it passes and you can continue your work after that, uh, after like a very, you know, short amount of time so uh, this is kind of my first principles thinking and I love your question thank you for that um, yeah my main the main thing that I want to avoid with this is um, meaningless waiting i don't see the purpose of the waiting of waiting a whole month basically if someone could actually give me a value for that that would be great well one value that is somewhat obvious is having enough due diligence for the things that are being um, um, voted upon but there's also the uh, the argument that you can never have enough due diligence in a sense. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Justin, does that resonate? Does my answer resonate with what you were asking? Did you hear like an answer to your question and what I shared? I heard um. I heard an exploration of, of like a, almost of the duality of going fast or going slow, <laughs> uh, uh, you know? And so, so it wasn't like it was resolved, but I do think that it was, um, um, and I also heard this, I heard your, like, I heard what I kind of pulled out was what, you, what I heard you really kind of caring about was just this process engineering and this, this subject around like, how do you really kind of um, design this process in a way that allows for um, people to take the right steps in right time in the right way for this, this in, in the context of, of, of network governance. Um, and so the timing mechanism is like one mechanism I hear that's, 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 that's changeable and testable with, you know, which and we can learn from it very quickly because we would know, you know, within a faster cycle if it worked or not. Um, but I want to name that the thing that, that um, yeah, yeah, that this, this kind of particular perspective of this the engineering, process engineering um, for like civic innovation through network, gov network governance. So like the, the nature of what you were holding and I thought that was really uh, a, a a really important position and posture in this ecosystem. So yeah, that's just, just my response. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you. 
I also think that we might do it as an experiment, like do it for uh, have the referendum have specifically the timing of two months or three months. So we might be able to test it. And if like we like it, we can put another referendum to make it uh, the official way, like sometime in some of the cycles, basically, uh, which is also a approach we can make. Uh, especially if we have the, if it worked like that before, we probably have the smart contracts ready or uh, very good blueprints for them, which is awesome. <laughs> it might be a lot faster. Uh, Telma, I see that you put your hand up and then you put it down just now. Um, I want to hear Julio first and okay. then I raise my hand again. <laughs> okay, thank you. Julio, please. Um, yeah, my, my, um, reaction on this is if the community is ready to move faster and, uh, for instance, we hear Reiki saying that we should slow down and let things flow, you know, so on the referendums channel. And the thing is, if referendums are big and complex, they take longer to read and to vote. But if the referendums really change only one setting or maybe do one phrase or agreement, very simple, then it's easier to vote and to get uh, consensus on. So if, um, yeah, so if we change the this one, property that is the cycle duration, the voting duration to half a moon instead of a one full moon period. This will kind of speed things up and to, yeah, to, to make it only that referendums move in a different pace could be doable too. But uh, the thing is, what do we want to do with that, right? Because for, for now, we did, we almost never used referendums before. And now we are posting a lot of referendums, trying to change a game guide that was not even approved yet. So um, the, the problem that I see is that Haifa kind of moved away from this position of changing seeds to leaving the community to decide what they want. After that event where the community refused the milestone to pay Haifa, then Haifa said, okay, you want, you know what's best, so decide for yourself. So that created like a vacuum. And now, even without the approved game guide, we are still, whatever we want to do, even if a small change, we are doing referendums and referendums, are hard because they are they they demand con almost uh, consensus. It, Ninety percent unity is really hard to get, even if you have like um, five to ten people with a different point of view, and or maybe they didn't understand the the thing entirely and they just vote no, then it doesn't pass. So. I believe speeding things up actually might cause more confusion because there will be more uh, referendums to evaluate or proposals to evaluate and people are not even able to evaluate that many proposals at the current rhythm. So I, I would say that if we need to do many changes on, on the referendum level, like game guide level or constitution level, uh, maybe since the game guide is not approved yet, I would say maybe have a, a committee to, to do the changes and make that all in the, the latest version of the game guide and, and then approve that guide, you know. So after that, we have a better way to handle with, uh, well, a, a ground at least to start from, from the referendums. Because referendums really should be as changing small things. One, we tried the, the, the governance, the, the economics referendum actually became bigger than it could be. And 
even five slides presentation is already confusing for a lot of people. So um, I say, yeah, I, I, I don't think changing the duration will help much, even though, because we are needing these changes and, and maybe the community doesn't, doesn't have the capacity to evaluate and vote for that yet. So yeah, I, I don't think that would solve the, the actual issue, but that's my perspective and reaction. Thank you. Thank you, Julio. Can you say a few words of the actual issue that you're um, perceiving? Just whatever comes up to your mind. What do you mean by that? <laughs> yeah. The, the problem is we are using decision uh, consensus decision making for uh, everything and that's hard I mean for for using for for sharing resources like money and allocating funds for projects it's already one thing right but for changing how we behave in agreements it's very hard to get a community of me even 300 people to agree on one thing you know so unless you do a lot of politics in uh, under the hood you know and talk to people hey vote for yes and that will be good for you you didn't even read that but just vote yes you know so and that's the thing that we end up doing because we we try to get people to vote sometimes even without understanding what they're voting for and they just vote that because they 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 trust us so what i see the problem is the the decision making for evolving the game guide referendums are not maybe not the best choice that's what i'm i'm seeing and speeding the process may not be the the best way so and since we don't have the game guide approved there is an opportunity to make a couple of changes and you know without referendums like Reich is doing you know yeah. rainbow seeds, there is no referendum for rainbow seeds and it's there and it's coming alive and you know so and the, before that Haifa could do everything you know they, we, we just trusted Haifa to they, they would be stewarding seeds but now they they say you do whatever you want so how do we decide where we want to move so I say the seeds commons is the new Haifa so we should trust the seeds commons to decide because the seeds commons have, uh, they, uh, there are Haifa members there. So if there is need for a software change, they could ask Haifa to change it. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I somewhat agree, somewhat agree with what you're saying. Uh, I think that uh, uh, um, I'm not trying to address the problems that you voiced with this. Uh, I'm trying to somehow move faster in order to address some of the things. Uh, but yeah. Um, This one of the things that were very alive as you uh, when you were talking was about the consensus decision making pro process and how do we make decisions that are uh, using funds through consensus or not uh, not exactly consensus but maybe uh, uh, majority voting is a better term. Um, so ideally I'm not in favor of the co-proposal being, uh, co-proposals being, um, voted in the way they're voted now. I think it forces proposals to be approved in a sense, 
um, unless there are people who are willing to vote vote them down. And uh, it's kind of um, and it's also has the popularity context. Uh, con it's also kind of a popularity contest. And it's also kind of a politics game where you I've seen people just go and ask people to vote, which is basically hacking the system. <laughs> it's not honoring the spirit of the of the system, right? So a much better um, option would be to have a like a process that would especially for core proposals if it's a bit of, it's a little bit off topic but i'll go there uh especially for core proposals people should at least have to do um pitch in order to get the funds in front of people who would ask them questions and they should have like a due diligence like uh there should be people who are accountable to do due diligence on on the on the funds how they're used are they used and all that like at least that that's like a, the minimum <laughs> thing <laughs> right see the people alive who are we handling handing like hundreds of thousands of seeds to use right see them who they are right um and that would be very good in a dho context if there is a DHO and a people who are part of that uh, process who are doing this work, that would be a, a great way to manage that. But I'll now zoom out of this process uh, and come into again into um, um, the topic about the speed and. Hmm. Yeah. Justin, I saw your hand coming up and then coming down. Uh, or did you want to say something specifically about what we are talking about with Julio right now? Or yes, but also Thomas' hand was up for mine, so I don't want to jump in front of her. Okay. Yeah, but, but I do have a I do have a comment on what Julio said. Uh, yeah, if it's connected with uh, what Julio said, I would prefer that you talk now, and then we'll come back to Thelma uh, because I'm not sure if she's having another question that is a different topic. Um, uh, Thelma, is your hand about the same topic as we're what we're talking about with Julio, or is it about something else? It's my my perspective on what we are discussing, but I, I don't mind if just just want to share. It just come to just... Okay, go then. No, tell my go. Just oh. yeah. Okay. Share. Yeah. Um, my first impulse when I heard your proposal and I. So there is there is a lot of noise. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, is there a way to like Move my computer? It uh, comes with a package. When I open my mic, my computer does this noise, and I apologize uh, for that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, so. This is uh, try to concentrate on what I'm telling you. And Th this is better, actually. Something changed. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I'll be fast in order not to. Um, so, what I, my first impulse was um, like Justin said, is what is the pain uh, for us to talk about the medicine? We need first to understand what is the pain. So what was there, uh, I, I was curious to hear, and I heard when you answered uh, from Justin, um, that 
uh, the motivation is coming not only from you, but from the moment we are in seats. It's coming uh, with the motivation of anxiety and frustration. And we are trying to find different ways to, to like relieve our anxiety and, and frustration. Um, and I, I was also thinking, so the, the, the medicine you proposed is speeding up the process. Um, I, I watched the, the red uh, wood uh, calls, the, the, four, the series of four, just one missing. I, I heard the three of them. And I heard different, uh, um, different perspectives on um, somebody said, maybe just putting up a referendum um, and, and going on the voting process uh, would not be the best because all the referendums were voting down so far. And I also heard, I, I thought it was you, Apostle, uh, proposing like voting in bits and pieces so that we can understand when we are down voting, what we are down voting and what we are appreciating in the, in the referendum. So I think like before proposing a medicine, we need to understand better what is the pain so that we can play different scenarios that could support us trying to evolve and improve the process. Another thing that I was uh, reflecting is that we are, seeds is proposing mimic nature. And then I was thinking why we have four moons. Um, there is a purpose for that natural rhythm to happen. And then we propose to follow that natural rhythm and then we get it. Uh, anxious and I say let's skip two or let's make it faster uh, and let's forget nature with them. Um, so I was just playing with that. Should we really, if we're like let's learn from nature and let's see what is there for us instead of just speeding up the process, understanding better what, what is the pain underneath and then trying to see what would be the uh, some increments in the process that would support us meet our goals and, and, and reach our vision instead of just trying to cut two moons in the story. <laughs> um, um, and the last piece I want to share is I, I lived in Sweden for nine years and I really, really, really appreciated the Swedish uh, society that big changes, they don't have any hurry to change anything. If they see an opportunity to change anything, they don't decide to change until it is largely discussed in society. And they create a lot of forums and different um, ways of sharing what is being proposed. And only then, when they see that they grew maturity in understanding what is being proposed, is that they put something to be voted. So maybe that could be something for us to think about the process and how we grow in maturity in understanding and also understanding what we are voting and what we are not, what we are voting for, what we are pro and what we are uh, cons in that process. So that is uh, a okay. yeah. reflection. Yeah, thank you for that. I just want to um point out maybe it wasn't very clear but i have a very clear pain defined which is that i see that waiting four weeks a uh, full cycle uh might be a, a very uh might be slowing down the um evolution 
of the ecosystem because we are waiting, waiting to see if a proposal is approved or disproved. So we can move forward. But if it's disproved, then you have another cycle to update it. And then you have another cycle to vote again. And, <laughs> and if, if a proposal goes up and it's disproved, it's downvoted. And you have just two weeks, you can iterate and you already know, understand because people commented why it's downvoted. You can, uh, you can understand why that was and you can make the adjustments and move a lot faster in the span of a month. You could put up a proposal, get rejected, improve it, and then it gets approved, the new one possibly. So it allows for a better, um, um, it helps with this process basically that you described of involving people because it's usually quite hard to get the attention of people and you if you actually put up a referendum that's a very um easy like a e much easier way to uh, uh to uh get them to contribute to that you want to make that change and this change is seriously being proposed by you <laughs> and you know so I don't find it in conflict with what you said. I find it in like it's um, in sy synchrony, basically. I don't know if that makes sense uh, for you. Um, um, uh, yes and no. Um, yes, if we try to, I, I hear you uh, when you say, how can we make the process um, more time effective as evolving as a, a, a proposal instead of starting all over again? Okay, a referendum is put on vote, it was downvoted, and then come to zero point and then start all over again and then get in the same trap like in the in the in the loop uh, but how can we make the process more mature within those time window to to reach its optimum instead of going back to zero and when it's there for voting it, it grew in maturity and understanding there for voting. That is the point. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, okay, I'll pass it on to Justin now. Justin, please. <clears throat> cool. I was kind of writing out some some thoughts, so I, I'll, I'll I'll say them a little bit. But um, yeah, Toma, thank you for thank you for for. For, 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 I feel like you really spoke to three of the kind of core um, pressures or 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 le levers that are at play in some way, which which is like um, or like even like criteria for understanding if we're uh, aligned to our constitution. That's not really what it was, but something like that. Whereas like, are we actually aligning to nature and 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 how we how our process is is designed and how the process is evolving. Um, and then also like, are we aware of the source by which we're trying to bring about change? Um, because that being really, really critical and that always be, it can always be shifting every, every month is probably something different. <laughs> you know, the, the, the pressures that we're feeling because I think about uh, just uh, it's kind of side, but I'll get back to that third point, but was, I heard that last week by the constant um, currency that, that which, was, which was almost lost in, in the proposal, which is that the reason why it was made the way it was and the, at, the, at the speed and at the depth that it was, was because it wanted to make sure that we didn't lose our community. It was meant to be a solution to hold us together when, when Reiki was kind of saying that we may split apart. And that, that heart that really came out in the discussion last, last Friday or last Thursday was really, I thought critical and, and, and beautiful and, 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 and almost un understandable from the nature of, 
of the proposal itself or the, or the context of just looking at on the, on the app and trying to understand what to do, whether to vote for it or not. Um, and so uh, that, 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 that being a motivator is really important to name. Um, and then the, the third that I kind of heard was like, um, like, is it about the, the thing that we're, that, that, that we're referring or the thing that we're changing, is it the, um, is it about the naturing or the, or the, the nature of it itself or the nurturing of it? So it's not, it's not quite right either, but it's like, if you want to make sure that the evolution of proposals are optimal, um, is it about making the time by which they happen faster? So you're speeding up, you're heating things up, you're making evolution happen at a faster rate, or is it about being more nurturing, really caring for the proposal across the process so that what you bring forward for voting has already been decided upon, or at least optimal for the people. And if you think about, um, so this, these are kind of three, three levers, it's like the source, it's aligning to nature, it's also the nurturing of that thing in the evolutionary process that is the month longer, two weeks or however many long it may be, as, as kind of critical levers that are here. And um, the last last bit I, I'll kind of say, just to, I mean, when Julia was speaking, I was like, like I, I was, um, we're, we're super, I was just plus, you know, I saw my, I was emojiing all the time because I was, I was really aligned to so much of what he was bringing uh, in, in so many ways. And, and, and I thought the last critical point that he brought was that, that, that we came, all of this came from this, this moment of, of decision that Seeds was mature enough to, 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 to make a decision that Haifa wasn't serving some really critical aspects that we needed to serve. And Haifa's response to that was, in some ways, was to, um, to separate and come back to us when they were ready and in hopes that we'd be ready too. <laughs> I know that's, not, that's not fully true, but it's, it's an aspect of it. And they're actually in that division is not actually is serving and also not serving on both sides in some ways, but it left a gap, you know, and that gap is, is what Seeds Commons in a way can solve. Um, and I think that it has to, um, to the only thing I disagree with that you said was that we, we need to trust these comments. And I go, well, no, we don't need to trust these, these comments because if these comments becomes hyphen number two, then, then that won't work for us. Our people won't be empowered to be able to resolve their own challenges and their own issues in ways that aren't reliant on a centralized system or a centralized body that, that really decides our direction. Um, there's something really important about the nature of, of doing it differently but yet filling that void um, that, that is here for us to take on. And I say us because pretty much everyone on this call is, you know, we have, we have yeah, maybe a 400 to a thousand something, you know, um, our, our network may be this large or our citizen population may be this large, but really it's probably about 60 to 80 of us who really are actively, um, actively involved in, in seeds. I think we don't have local pilots, we don't have reach, but the people who are really, um, who both are looking at bridging the, the, the hyper local to the digital kind of digital social governance. There's about 80 of us, I'd say, probably maybe, maybe 140 for, for on, on a great day. Um, and so this is like, you know, <laughs> it's like a high school club or a university club, even though it's global and it's remote and it's so distant, there's a nest to it that there's a deep pressure, but it's also a very practical, like not that it, it can be overwhelming in many ways, but it's really also not if we give it, if we get really down to what is happening here. Um, and I think that if, if, if 40 of us can come into the right process or, or 15 of us or 20 of us, not in a way that is exclusive, but in a way that continues to honor who, um, you know, just the, um, the actual size of what we're working on here, although the impact is great, the, 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 the people and the number of people is not that, it's not that overwhelming if we really bring it down. Um, and I, I, think, I think taking the time to make sure that thing's good, uh, taking time to honor the people who are here who are giving their life and their energy and their time to this process, who, who all deeply care, if we can find that alignment, that would be like civic innovation and governance innovation that the world has never really seen before. To be honest, like it sounds silly because it's, it is like high school, like a high school club, but it, it's, it's, it is that we have to do so in a mature way and in a, in a time that it, it asks for us to, um, I don't know, I'm, trying to, I'm, I'm saying too much now, so I'll come off of it, but the, the, the thought is just that there's the, um, yeah, what Seeds is bringing is innovative in the sense that we're operating at an edge that no one's ever been for, but the things itself are actually not that edgy. Um, and with the right context and the right content about what we're actually doing here, uh, we can kind of continue to, to, to meet the practical and, and, and not feel like we have to leave people behind or, or, or do things in, in, a, in, in this way that doesn't feel you know, right, true, or beautiful for us um, because of 
how it has been um, from the pressures of fear uh, or from the feeling of lostness that I think are motivating some of our actions now because we don't, um, because, they, because they have been, um, because they have been the nature by which we've evolved in the past, but that may not be the, the same thing now. Uh, to not evolve in reaction to or, or for, for fear of, but to evolve um, towards ideals uh, collectively and together. And I think that that happens to those three levers that, that Belmont mapped out and the spirit of what Julia was bringing about what we're actually doing here and coming out of the, this, this responsiveness or this reaction to the game guide. So just thoughts, I said a lot, said a lot there, so I apologize. Also, I was kind of, I was kind of feeling a moment, so I said I take it. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, yeah. I actually think it could uh, this speeding up, uh, opening up. I will uh, like I would change the wording now. I will change the wording from speeding up the process to opening up. Uh, uh, I wanna I wanna paraphrase it. Uh, to um, decreasing, uh, increasing opportunity. So it, increasing the opportunity for uh, uh, votings to be uh, put up and accepted or disproved so uh it's it's not in conflict with what um it i i kind of feel that people could also do that um preparation that uh communication beforehand to explain what they're intending uh with the changes uh, but then they would have, a, when they put it up for proposal, for the proposing, they would have a very fast um, um, decision whether they, what they proposed uh, would be um, um, in a line, in alignment with the other uh, um, with the community, with the seats community who is governing, or not be in alignment, basically. So, um, I kind of feel it's, it's, there is no, there is, in a sense, it's kind of nurturing because it removes the anxiety that they have they have to have a proposal up by this date or they have to wait a month another month right if you don't have the proposal ready by this date you just have two weeks for the next opportunity to have it up and we may even have cycles where there is no proposals at all and I don't exclude that option uh, or yeah, uh, but what you were saying, the other thing, big thing that I found in your sharing, Justin, was about how to get big amount of people to be in alignment with something and for a change. And I think the process that we are uh, developing in RE and now in the Seeds Commons and other DHOs where uh, you have consent decision-making process in small circles that are up to 12 people and they colonically um, like when it becomes circle too big then it uh, branches out into another circle, basically. Um, that's that's the potential innovation because it's 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 not and it's not like we're um, like 
it's not like we're um rediscovering the wheel or something the this whole process is based on a hundred years of uh self-organizing work um and research around self-organizing principles which are based on um sociocracy holocracy and similar uh principles so there there is a lot of there even if it doesn't look like it there is like a lot of uh like a lot of the iceberg is under the water so i think that this would bring a very meaningful innovation to um to the whole ecosystem uh and would make a good difference and would enable would actually enable for to have um that alignment between hundreds and thousands of people because there are there are uh systems based on holacracy who for example uh um i heard ravi say that in kerala in india there are, there is a parallel government of a million people who are self organizing through holacracy through holacratic principles and they are actually like succeeding in doing self organizing um in a sense that even if someone has a problem and they go to the official police the official police tells them go to the go to the circles <laughs> to the this parallel government circles <laughs> they are acknowledging that they are the um authority in in that in that state uh and they can make change happen so i think we have a very good ground in that process the thing is that 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 is the things that are off chain basically and we have a whole governance process that is on chain that is has started with majority voting and majority voting is very problematic in itself so this uh speeding up of the iterations could kind of like help us move faster in the in the um fail fast basically or uh, fail or um it doesn't change the nature nobody says that you should move faster because the voting cycles are two weeks right you can still do what telma said you can still do the engagement and the conversations and the due diligence and all that even with the longer or the smaller cycles it's kind of like it's they're they're not bound to each other in a sense so uh it kind of provides more opportunity for people to put up their changes and to get feedback faster from the community that's what i think um i want to also honor ash uh ash do you want me to read what you wrote in the chat or um do you want to speak probably you want me to read emoticon okay i'm not sure if if this is possible but let proposal initiator decide if it needs to be 14 uh, express vote or 28 days depending on feedback received if they think it's easy to vote based on feedback received they can keep the duration to 14 days else it stays 28 days so that people have time to think about the proposal what if people travel to places without internet for 2 weeks yes that's a good point i think we already have uh the del vote delegation 
So if people travel to places without internet for two weeks, they can delegate their votes to someone else for that time. That's the um, direct answer to that question. And the whole uh, thing with having two different um, cycles at the same time is uh, something that Irina said as well, that it could lead to a lot of confusion. So people would not know which are um, uh, um, people would not know which proposals are 14 and which are 28 and how much tokens do they have in each one and it's kind of like messy <laughs> becomes messy. I see that you wrote I won't have time to read before delegating. I don't. Uh, yeah, uh, before um, the thing with delegating is that you don't, we won't need to, to read. Delegating means you just say that you give your tokens to someone else, for example, guy, and go, guy does the due diligence and votes for you. That's, that's delegation, basically. Sorry, let me, let me quickly speak here. Um, so, there will be times where I don't want to delegate and there will be times that I really don't have access to internet because I'm traveling to places where, where there is no internet. If, if voting cycles are shortened, then there are, you're actually leaving such people out, especially people on the ground, whom a lot of decisions actually affect. So you think that that would uh, like stop people from being able to participate? because they don't want to delegate and they may have to travel, take a vacation or something. Yeah, you know, well, probably. Like so if I'm leaving Australia, for example, and if I'm traveling to Zimbabwe, I don't know um, where I can buy a SIM card. I don't know where I will get access to internet. I don't, and even if I do, my first priority would be to talk to people um, than go on seas because I'm probably will be having very limited access to internet in terms of the time that I'm exposed to. So, so voting becomes like a, a lower priority in such cases. And, and then you're trying to make people read through a proposal and then push them to vote um, within 14 days when they don't have proper access to internet. It becomes a little unfair on them. Hmm. Okay, yeah. Thank you for that feedback. Thank you. Hmm. It's a fair point. <laughs> I don't have any answer to that. <laughs> it's just, it's a fair point. Yeah. Um. And I think I would add also, um, we really need to pay attention to the side effects of any change uh, because the voting process what we really want is to have a lively community, right? People, citizens participating in the ecosystem and not just coming and voting. Uh, and uh, we don't want a machine of approving things just for the sake of approval. And, uh, and how we make the community alive is really a, a trying them to participate, to share their thoughts, to understand what is happening inside the ecosystem, and then support that as a system, as a living system, and not just going on the app and just approving things. Or, or uh, disproving. <laughs> yes. It's, it's, it's more often that referendums are downvoted than they're reported, right? You're right. That's why we're trying to propose a medicine to revert that. Yeah. But what but is the medicine that I, we are proposing? I, I think if we want to, if we get into that discussion, how to create a lively community, I think it doesn't have anything to do with the voting. How lively is the community? It has everything to do with with is seats pro, is seating is seats meeting this people's needs. 
if seeds is meeting these people's needs, they will be engaged and they will be, um, uh, we will have a lively community. If seeds is not meeting people's needs, then they will go somewhere else to uh, fulfill their needs. <laughs> but it goes to the governance process, which referendums are about. Um, well, it's, mm, I don't agree with that. It goes to uh, how well is the system designed and how is, how well is it functioning? So if you have, uh, for example, I'll take the coal proposals. A lot of the coal proposals actually need fiat funding, right? And they also can use the seeds, right? So if we provide them with a mechanism that they can fulfill their needs, they can get fiat funding and they can also spread seeds through what they're doing, both of those things, uh, then they will, uh, they will meet their needs and the seed scope will be valuable for them. And uh, we would have a win-win relationship, right? But right now uh, they're explicitly asking for seeds and they're implicitly needing some of that to be fiat in order to pay themselves or do something else, right? Anything. And that is causing a lot of confusion and a lot of um, frustration because they get the campaign funds and they go and they sell them or they give them as payment for people to work for them. Uh, they give salaries and the people go to the secondary market and start selling and the price gets lower and who's, whoever is most desperate that can give the best price is actually able to sell their seeds <laughs> and it becomes a huge mess, right? <laughs> and so neither people, neither projects that are coming to get funded are meeting their needs. Neither the people who are working for their projects are meeting their needs. Uh, neither the the seeds uh, ecosystem is meeting their its needs to spread seeds and to have more uh, people um, participate in the whole seeds journey, right? So this is a an example of dysfunctional uh, relationship which has nothing to do with the voting. It has everything to do with how the voting is how the it, it has um, somewhat to do with the voting, but the voting is not the root issue. The root issue is how the whole, that whole process is managed, right? Because right now it's managed, it's tried, it's set up as a trustless system. And it was meant to just, for these seeds to just be used and it isn't invites and it's, it's not designed to meet the needs of these projects, basically. It's, that's not what is designed. And it could be, we could create a new system that would uh, be able to meet the needs of these projects. So they will come, they will meet their needs, words will spread, the process will flourish. But we need to come up with a pr better process for, for that, for meeting the needs that they have, then like making sure that the funds that they're getting are going where they say they're going, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, that they're following up on what they proposed and you know all that. So in a sense, if we are building a lively community, this is uh, the kind of things that we need to um, focus on if that is what we're doing. Um, yeah, I see we have three minutes until finish time.
Um, and I want to hear from Guy, Guy if because I haven't heard him in this. Uh, if he wants to say something, no pressure. If he doesn't want to say anything, it's also okay. <laughs> uh, um, not really, unfortunately. I, I've had a lot of um, distractions during this, like people coming around my house and things. So I, I'm not really kind of super focused on on, okay. uh, on the being able to say conversation. Anything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guy. So, um, okay. Um, as a general like feeling, I feel rather discouraged. I had maybe one positive feedback from Irina and most of the feedback from people were that it's not, it was rather negative. Um, most of the people were skeptical of, of this change, this particular change, which is interesting. I didn't expect it, frankly. <laughs> Uh, I felt is it's a much um, better idea. Um, okay. I think we could use that as uh, as a process to understand how to improve the process. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, because uh, just to to mention that. Like I heard in the uh, in the red uh, redwood calls that Justin downvoted the two referendums, and he had his uh, his uh, justifications for doing that. Um, and and then you propose something as a referendum, and you heard people saying why they would downvote that or would not uh, join as that being a uh, proposal for a referendum. And then we could look at, at the process that happened here today for us to understand how would the referendum be born? How would that would a proposal turn into a referendum? And how to go to the process of making a referendum be, be accepted by the community or be evolved to a level that a community would say that is a good thing for the community. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's a good point. But there is also, it's just coming for me, whether the people think it's a good change and whether it's actually a good change are two different things. And we cannot know until we actually experience it in a sense. But yeah, let's do uh, a, uh, like this uh, onboarding the people for the change is necessary. So it get so it get upvoted. Uh, but then uh, we, yeah, yeah. Let's do a round of checkout. I see Justin wanted to do that. If someone wants to write their checkout in the chat, that is also okay. Uh, Justin, please. Yeah, um, I just want to say that I'm super grateful for this conversation and, and for having everyone shut up and, and also, also for you for, you know, I, I think I think you let go of, of, of a lot of the agenda that you brought in order to really learn and focus in on what was coming up. But I think that was really helpful for, a, 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 I think, wait, wait. Thomas pointed out is really good. It's like this process that we were just in, you know, if it doesn't feel good at the end of it, we should probably work on that so that we can make sure that people don't feel discouraged from having these kind of conversations. Because I understand, I think I understand deeply how that how that is. And at the same time, so it's a place we can we can definitely uh, optimize or work on. But I think the thing itself is is a is a microcosm of that halon, a halon of, of a larger process that's beneficial to get the feedback and the perspective before making a formal proposal in a way to save time and energy. But also to, to be able to make sure that it really captures the voice of the people. So, Apostle, I think you're already innovating 
civic innovation is already happening here by the nature of how the space is held. And, and I also want to encourage you because I think that um, what I see is that you are already holding a really important role or an archetype in the system that doesn't yet have a name or a place. And I think that honoring that thing is really um, what I, another thing that I would just take away from this, from this, this, this call is like, how do I, how can I be what I'm, I'm seeing as possible in a way that um, that's recognized and, and that gives the, you know, the, the, in the right space, um, cause maybe the, maybe the RE outer space isn't always gonna be the right space for that, but the nature of the thing itself is, I thought that was really important thing too. And uh, the last, maybe the last thing I'll say is just that, uh, um, yeah, there's so much wisdom in this call that I would definitely think people should watch it. And, 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 I, and I think that these three things that are economics, which I heard Julius point to in a way, like if we're not using, if we're not using like our economic drivers, our, our, our governance drivers, and then like our financial drivers are three aspects of a whole. And our economics are really the local pilots right now, um, but they're kind of misrepresented or underrepresented. And I heard Ash kind of naming like the a problem that local pilots face in being a part of governance. I think our emphasis is on governance, but it's probably the least, um, it's probably that it should almost be the medium by which things happen, not the, not the emphasis. And then the financial being really the software, the technology of Haifa, which is kind of challenging because it's almost an invisible authority that we have to kind of follow. And so recognizing these three drivers and, and seeds and seeing how they're in balance or how they're in equilibrium, I think is critical. And I kind of heard Toma um, speaking that in, in some ways, and I want just to double down on that, 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 that right now, our people maybe not maybe aren't empowered, and those that are are really doing the work that we're talking about being important may not also not be empowered by the nature by which we focus, and and um, and that that thing can shift easily or just over time if we decide to do that. Um, so possible. Thank you so much for this space and and uh, thank you, Guy and Thelma. Um, Probably you guys showed up too. Thanks. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Um, yeah, I appreciate your feedback. Thank you. <laughs> Really appreciate it. Um, Ash uh, says, thank you, Apostle, for organizing this call. As Thelma mentioned, this can be a way forward discussing before presenting a proposal for voting. Yeah, yeah, I feel that, yeah. And Guy, do you want to do a checkout? Uh, yes, uh, yeah, sorry, I was a bit distracted. Um, but yeah, thanks for organizing the call and um, I think it's a good idea to have two weeks feedback and then two weeks voting. I don't, I don't see why, why we shouldn't at least try it. Um, but I don't know. Um, I think we should experiment with things and see if it makes a difference. I can understand why they made the voting period longer, but to try and get more people to vote. But um, it's always a struggle trying to get people to vote in decentralized projects so i think you have to be content with much a much smaller number than than what you think it should be probably yeah. it's, there's always like a core of people who are driving any any of these things forward and everybody else is just kind of floating around on the edges and uh i don't i don't think we need to get discouraged i think i think uh we'll we'll find the collective intelligence to, to make it work. We just have to keep, keep going and keep talking and see what comes out of it. So thanks, yeah. Thanks, Guy. Yeah, I think I could actually, if I put up the referendum, I'll put a link to this recording <laughs> in the referendum because it's such a good sense making a uh, lot of your points around it um Thelma do you want to say something for a checkout yes uh, first uh, acknowledge uh, your energy to, to evolve it's beautiful we need that energy I think we are all here trying to do that um and I think that you are living with much more than you expected. And we as a, as, as a system uh, as well, because none of us were expecting this conversation to happen and, and, and it happened. 
And how I live today is more with a question that somebody raised in the Redwood recording is what was being proposed in the referendum. Uh, maybe the referendum wouldn't be the best mechanism, best tool to discuss that. And I'm living with that feeling as well. Um, and also adding to what Julie said, um, if you want to do something that you really believe on to improve the system, just go and do it. And so maybe without going through the referendum, we could implement what you're proposing. Just using the four uh, cycles, lunar cycles, to create a design that is not there yet. And then go to the voting or in parallel to the voting, develop that uh, two, two week cycle without needing to ask for permission and just pilot that, use that, try to emulate what you're doing, see the result. And then if it's something that it worked and then show as a, a, a process, as a referendum to validate the process. Mm. That was... I would love if we were able to do that. <laughs> I uh, I think it that's a space that Renaissance Explorers should be about to just do this kind of experiments and pilots. But we're right now, frankly, we're heavily under-resourced. <laughs> and <laughs> let's see if that will change in the near future and we would have more opportunity to, to do these kind of experiments uh, as well. Um, yeah, uh, I would, I would actually love for most of the governments to be happening in a consent decision-making process and not in a majority voting context, because it's this, this, these two are totally different yeah. things, beasts. And, uh, I learned that in the past couple of months and, I see how it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, the thing that is that it... the, the, the thing is that it's very hard to do a consent decision making on chain. And, but it would be much more effective for everything that is being done. But <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a paradox there. <laughs> I think this conversation to be continued. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next week, um, like Justin said, next week we could yeah. go from here. Yeah. Thanks all. Thank you for being here and have a great day. Thank, Thank you, Justin. Good to see Bye. your face. <laughs>